Uh, real Estate Investment <laughs> Services Company, JL, says it's seeing a seismic increase in demand for co-working spaces. The firm predicts that so-called flexible workspaces will con constitute up to 30% of corporate portfolios by 2030. Technological developments uh, coupled with the rise of the gig economy are said to be fueling the trend. Neil Murray joins us here, EMEA, CEO of Corporate Solutions at JL. But you basically, Neil, good morning, Chief. Good morning. Happy to do you. You basically cover the area for, for the clients as well. Yes, you what they want. For, that, that, so let's cut to the chase. Yeah. All this nonsense about putting in a ping pong table and a pool table to make everyone feel squidgy and happy in their workplace, it's all a load of fluff, isn't it? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think, um, I think the world is changing. I think that um, uh, there's direct correlations now between happiness in the workplace, how people feel, their pay. engagement. Pay. Well, well, pay is, of course, Engagement relevant. with your boss. But it's, it's not just work about hours. pay. I think it's, flexible hours. I think it's more than that. Flexibility, certainly. You know, the concept of choice, the concept of empowerment, engagement particularly young people coming through, um, feeling like they want to be connected with uh, the fundamentals of an organisation, their values, okay. oh, let, their let's brand. Let's yeah. go down a different route from what you expected. Yeah. You walked into this office today. Yeah. What, would, what should we put in to keep all the... We've got brilliant millennials. There's, there's hundreds of them sitting behind you. Yeah, yeah. Of which they aren't too. Amazing, amazing team. <laughs> I even know half their names. Uh, and, 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 and what do we do to keep them in? What would you change about this office to keep them around? I mean, look, uh, the first thing is I think my experience coming into this morning has been, been excellent. I've been treated like, you know, extremely welcoming in. So, um, and a very welcoming environment. And of course you're in an industry that, that uh, is quite exciting, exciting to, to young people coming in. But I think um, fundamentally, you know, buildings are the biggest single manifestation of a company's brand and values and culture. And that's obviously very evident coming into your studio. Yeah. No, to be fair, we, we, when you come out of our lifts, you see the studio and everything, and I think that does look very well. It does. I it think. looks, yeah, it looks yeah. extremely impressive. Yeah. Um, but in terms of costs for uh, the setup of the... I mean, yields have gone down uh, because mm. the prices have gone up, and despite Brexit, it, it's, it's still a very competitive area as well. So, I mean, are landlords, are companies willing to invest in the kind of things that you, you think are needed to, yeah. to, to, to actually keep people more enticed I think at work? The, the fundamentals of the real estate market are still strong. You know, we're seeing increased, alloca uh, increased capital allocations to real estate. Um, as its own, its very own asset class now, which previously it wasn't, it was sort of seen as, as alternatives. You know, continued uh, growth of, uh, or trend towards urbanization in general. Um, so real, the fundamentals of the real estate market are strong. I think companies, as I said, are, you know, having gone through a period of seeing real estate as functional, as a cost line where they wanted to sort of save a, as much as possible, they're seeing it as now an engine for growth, an engine for innovation, for motivation of people. And so, yes, they're putting money into, uh, in, you know, making real estate work for them. All right. I mean, it's interesting. We, heard, we uh, did a lot of interviews with people like Land Securities mm -hmm. at the end of last year on corporate earnings, and the sense was that they really are starting to think about putting the hard hat on now in terms of their expectations for capital value appreciation in, in London uh, office uh, mm. over, the, over 2018. Mm. What, what actually is that, if that comes to pass mm. and we see London uh, office replicate what we've seen in London residential, what, what ultimately does that mean for your yeah. business? And it's really interesting. I think we, um, the markets were surprisingly resilient in, in London last year. We saw some, some pretty marquee transactions going through post-Brexit, post obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the walkie-talkie, the cheese grater. Uh, we're seeing major companies, particularly technology companies, still making long-term commitments in London. Um, outside of London, of course, as well, in, in uh, farm and life sciences sector, making long-term commitments to London. Of course, there's risk. Um, 2018 is a big year. And so um, in what's going to happen ar around Brexit and soft, hard Brexit, etc., and our, the financial institutions could be, uh, could be majorly affected. Of course, there are contingency plans in place. We speak to our clients about all the time, the what-ifs. Uh, and we'll see how, how 2018 plays out and well, whether you, or not if, they're enacted. If you've got a lease renewal coming up mm. in the next uh, three to four months, um, what kind of uh, uh, renegotiation increase would be appropriate, do you think, in the current climate yeah, with I mean, the outlook it's, it's, as it's, it's it is? A, it's a really interesting point. I mean, as I said, surprisingly, uh, rents have remained strong. I, I think uh, at the moment we're not seeing that downside that maybe many of us expected. Mm -hmm. That said, 2018 will be interesting in terms of you know, where the decisions go um, and, and the decisions that the financial services companies in particular have to make in 18. But, but the bulk of the money is not European money. It's 
This is a floating sea of property sales and it's funded from everywhere. You know, it's funded from everywhere. Foreign money is everywhere and you, Brexit is not a major impact on London property. And we'll um, wrap it up at that. Peter, thank you. You got the final word in. Cheeky. Uh, Neil Murray, thank you so much for being with us. Neil Murray joined us from JLL.